Hello, everyone. We are live at 5. It's Thursday. I have to look. April 23rd. And I'm Paul Wintour. I'm Beth Stevens. And we're joined, as always, by Caitlin Brennan. Hello. How you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, hey, who do we have here today, Beth? Oh, we are very lucky because we have Bradley Gibson with us today from The Lion King. Yes, yes, yes. yes. He's fantastic. <laughs> We're going to find out what he's been up to. First, today's news. Our starry Sondheim Sunday just got even starrier. It did. It got so starry. So we are talking about Take Me to the World, a Sondheim 90th birthday celebration, which will happen on Sunday wherever you are watching this, on Broadway.com or on our YouTube channel. Now, I put my glasses on because this is a long list of additions and very sorry so i'm just gonna go and read I'm, them. I'm involved in this concert and everybody wanted to be in it so yeah on. well everyone loves sondheim okay this is an alphabetical order because it's so starry there is no other order it could be in annalee ashford laura benanti melissa erico beanie feldstein josh groban jake gyllenhaal neil patrick harris judy kuhn linda lavin lynn manuel miranda ben platt randy rainbow and Leah salonga right Leah salonga now, there will also be special appearances. All of those people are singing, correct, Paul? Yeah. Okay. Now, so there will also be some, some all singing Sondheim songs. All, all singing them. Sondheim songs. There will also be some special appearances, not just a hello, but an appearance from Victor Garber, Joanna Gleason, Nathan Lane, and yes, Steven Spielberg. Okay. So they joined the previously announced. Very long list of very fancy people. Look on Broadway.com to see that previously announced list because I can't read this many names. But once again, Sunday, 8 o'clock, right here on Broadway.com. And we are going to celebrate Sondheim. And we're also um, offering support for, for a step actor striving to end pottery, po poverty. Not pottery. Pottery is good. And that's Mary Mitchell Campbell's um, organization. And she is the event's musical director. I was hoping Spielberg was going to sing Maria, but it's not happening. That's a bummer. Yeah, and guys, we found out today that Mark Rylance is heading back to Jerusalem. Did we? Not the town, not the city. Like the West End? Yep. So Jerusalem was a big hit uh, for Mark Rylance, right? Both in London and on Broadway. And he's bringing it back. He's bringing back Johnny Rooster Byron. That's his character. This is um, such a good play. Yeah, so this is coming back to the West End in 2021, um, and it, director Ian Rickson's back, and producer Sonia Friedman's back, and uh, what is it about, Beth? Johnny Rooster Bryan, who lives in a dilapidated trailer, I remember that trailer, deep in the middle of the bourbon British town, despite frequent eviction notices. Anyway, I'm, I'm not going to keep going, but it's really good. It's now, really good. doesn't it feel good, Paul, to announce a play? What? Say it again? Doesn't it feel good to announce a production? We haven't done that in a while. A real production on a stage. You're right. You're right. They're just like, they're doing it in a year. We're doing it in a year. <laughs> but yeah, we like hearing about new things. So we're into it. Yes. And some of the biggest stars are showing off their gratitude. Okay. That's a picture of Adina Menzel. There are a lot of stars involved with this. Adina Menzel was nominated and also was a nominator for the Gratitude Awards. We've talked about this before. It was. It I'm sorry, what? How does it work? What are the gratitude? Yeah. All right, let me explain. So first, is, first of all, this is how the 86th Annual Drama League Awards reframed themselves uh, during this you know, current crisis. So they are going to have a pre-recorded digital fundraiser, which will air on April 30th at 7.30. Okay, here's what happened. They asked a bunch of stars to nominate who they are grateful for. And the stars did. And it's everyone from Marianne Elliott's associate director, Kristen Chenoweth nominated Rosie O'Donnell. Nathan Lane nominated his longtime dresser, who he always thinks in his Tony Awards speeches. Look it up. And people nominated directors. Condola Rashad nominated Irene Gandy. I mean, good stuff. Good stuff. So you can take a look. I don't know. Irene Gandy got one. I love that. Okay. Yeah, she did. Uh, she's a friend of ours. And, and you'll see. Oh, yeah. If you if you go to the story on Broadway.com, you can click on the link and watch the video of these messages from the stars and talk about why. Because actors really do love their dressers. I mean, like, that's a special, 
that's a special relationship that happens. There. And in fact, Adina Menzel nominated her very longtime dresser, Joby Horrigan. And if you go back on Broadway.com, we did a piece on her. And by we, I mean me. And I will uh, make sure you have that link so you can check that out. Wow, look at you. You've, maybe you've helped make it happen. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yes, and um, MCC Theater announced a very starry benefit reading. They sure did. So uh, Marissa Tomei, I'm sorry, Caitlin. Uh, Marissa Tomei, um, she, back in the early days, before she was an Oscar-winning Oscar um, actress, was in a play called Beirut, which was a big hit uh, in the late 80s. I remember the poster was all over Manhattan when I- It was everywhere, it, yes. The black and white poster, you remember that. Uh, mm -hmm. So anyway, they're doing a special virtual reading. This is Alan Bound's play, um, and it's happening on Tuesday at 7.30, and it's um, bringing Marissa Tomei back to the role of Blue. And Oscar Isaac, that's exciting. He was supposed mm -hmm. to be in Three Sisters right now, but he will be appearing opposite her playing Torch. This is a really interesting play to bring back because it tells the story of New York where those who have been diagnosed as carriers of the AIDS virus are forced to stay in a closed off neighborhood. So obviously, you know, there's some interesting parallels. It's a good time to uh, maybe look at this play again. I'm really curious to see it myself. Uh, so MCC is doing it for their VR Light campaign and all the money they raise will be matched by the MCC board. And uh, they, so what they were doing is they're actually selling tickets, like $5 tickets, $15 and 25. And the five and the 15 are sold out, I'm sorry, but you can get a $25 ticket and it's a great play and a great cause and um, fantastic, fantastic performers. Definitely. Yeah. And happy birthday, Shakespeare. Fun. That is right. It is the Bard's 400. Fun. It's the Bard's 456th birthday today. Wow. And there is a very starry lineup celebrating and toasting Shakespeare. And this is put on by the Chicago Shakespeare Theater. Uh, this is today at 730 Central Time, because that's where Chicago is, 830 Eastern Time. Hosted by Barbara Gaines, who's the artistic director, and Rick Boynton, the creative producer. Now, we have Andrew Headley involved. We have the Broadway Queens from Six performing. Henry Haddon Hayton, who is in Flying Over Sunset. T.R. Knight, who you know from many shows. Uh, so they will all be giving special performances, or uh, what, what else are they doing? Performances, and they're going to talk. So that's kind of any chance you can get to see Heather Headley and the six queens, you're in royalty, it's royalty. I definitely like Heather Headley more than Shakespeare. You know that, Beth. <laughs> I would like to see Heather Headley in a Shakespeare show. <laughs> I wanna see her sing her face off, but fine. <laughs> you go see that, you dream that. Bradley Gibson, I think, agrees with me. <laughs> Heather Headley sing. Uh, thank you, Beth. Hey, Caitlin, why don't you tell everyone about today's guest? Gladly, guys. Yes, today we have Bradley Gibson here with us today on Live, Live Home Edition, live on both Facebook and YouTube. Bradley has been the prince of the Pride Rock as Simba in The Lion King on Broadway for quite a while now, and his other Broadway credits include since in Rocky and A Bronx Tale. We're so happy to have him here today. You guys can follow him on social at bradgibson13. Leave all of your questions down in the comments below, and please welcome Bradley and Paul. Hey Hi. guys. Hi, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. Okay. Uh, you know what? She just reminded well, you want to see Heather Headley, right? I mean, you like Heather Headley. Always Heather Headley. Oh my oh. god. Oh. Not Shakespeare singing. We want to see her belting. I, mean, I want her to be happy. So if yeah, she, yeah, yeah. Shakespeare, that's fine. <laughs> as long as she adds a song to it. Uh <laughs> so um I actually have how long have you been on Pride Rock? I, I, I what how many performances are we up to? Are you uh, it's almost like next month it'll be two years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. It's been a long time. Although you're taking a little break. A little break. As everyone does. <laughs> a little break, a little unexpected break. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, two years, that's a that's quite a that's quite a run. The longest run I've ever done because I did a, a Bronx tale for about a, almost a year and a half. Uh -huh. So this is my longest run so far. This is great. So, is, and how does that feel as a performer to sort of have a, a good steady thing like that? Um, you know, doing eight shows a week that consistently requires you to always keep it fresh and always um, never uh, get too settled, right? But luckily the Lion King is such a moving machine that we're always keeping it fresh and rehearsing and touching things uh, up to make sure they're clean and good for the audience. But it feels so good. I love being on Broadway, right? That's my 
That was the dream as a little kid, coming to New York and seeing shows. So I'm loving it. So your um, your quarantine break is allowing for some facial hair, I see. Look at this. I feel like a grown up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't bring that back to the men's skull. That's no. Not Can you imagine that red makeup and the facial hair? That would be so messy. <laughs> <in that. laughs> So you're just like go and you're just like oh can you imagine that red makeup and the facial hair that would be so messy in that. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just like go and you're just like doing yeah. it. I shaved it once for um some work I had to do, but then I let it grow back again. I'm gonna let it grow until I have to shave it. Let's see what happens. Uh-huh. Cool. And you're in the city, right? Yeah, Upper West Side. Uh-huh. And so what have you what have you been up to? What have you been up to? How are you keeping your son? You know, I have not stopped for seven years. Like I'm thankful for that, but now having the chance to stop, it's definitely been um, a nice time to relax, a nice time to create, but also, like I said before, stop. I think that we have to press pause. The world is pausing. So it's okay to binge watch some shows and eat some snacks and spend time with my fiance. And yeah, it's been, it's been nice, but I definitely miss uh, the great white way. Are you guys together in the, Okay, yeah. yeah, it's just the two of us. <laughs> and uh, so let's talk about, we're gonna talk about the binging, but let's talk about the snacks. When you're mm -hmm. not worrying about Simba body, mm -hmm. um, and you know like, cause you know, we're gonna have a little warning when you have to go back to Fried Rock. So you'll be able to like, maybe like redefine an app or two. <laughs> I need the warning. <laughs> <laughs> we need a warning. How much warning do we need to block out? <laughs> Give me a few weeks warning, please. <laughs> yeah, snacks. I mean, <laughs> you know, all the snacks. I can't stop snacking. Really? It's yeah. hard. It's really it's, hard, yeah. It's hard to just be close to a kitchen all, all the time. Oh my gosh, and if you have good stuff, like you can't just have like, just. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And what is what is your um, what is your recommendation for me on TV? I need to block out some time for some Ooh, something good. We just watched. We just finished. Um, what are you watching? I'm watching Insecure. Is back on HBO. I love Insecure. Okay. Lisa Ray's show. It's really great. Yeah, I love the show. Um, Unorthodox. Oh, I know. Tell me about that one. Oh, we're getting like oh, it's juicy and like it keeps it at the edge of your seat. Loving okay. that. Oh my gosh, so many shows. Also, I'm re watching um, we Smash with uh, Playbill. Felicia at Playbill is a friend of mine. So, we've been like on the Smash. Thing. You did the whole thing? Yeah, I never saw um, season wow. two of Smash. So, I didn't know what I didn't know what happened. Really? I didn't know what happened. No, I never knew. Wow. Now, you know which show won the Tony. I'm really happy for Ivy. I was, I was rooting for Ivy all along. <laughs> sure. I think, I mean, I think we all were. Did right. You know? yeah. <laughs> what about the Lion King family? Are you guys all uh, staying in touch? And yeah, we are talking. L. Steven Taylor, I talked to him a lot. Uh, Adrian Walker, who plays Nala, talked to her some. My uh, makeup artist Brenda, I'm always talking to her. My dresser Jack. It's crazy not having those connections every day, especially with uh, Brenda or Jack, my dresser. Um, just because they're such good friends of mine now, they kind of. They comfort me when things are not going the way I want them to, or when I'm overwhelmed, or we're always catching up about our day and what we want to do. So it's it's weird not having that connection to your community that you're so used to, but it's nice to see that that community doesn't go away when it's not happening at nighttime, right? Right. Well, let's talk about that driven thing because you said like you know you said for six years, right? You've been really sort of like on this, mm -hmm. it's like a hamster wheel, right? You're like mm -hmm. just keep, keep just keep going and keep going. Mm -hmm. You've been really successful. Uh, and it is interesting, uh, you're, you're a young guy, but you do, it is interesting to have this moment come where you can kind of like sit back and go, oh, I can actually like reflect and I can actually plot my next, what I want to do in my life. And I want to, do you feel like it, it sort of changed you the last couple months? I definitely think so. I think that we don't get a chance to reflect like yeah. because we're always moving. I'm always going, we're preparing for something else. So, um. I'm just kind of in awe all the time of what's happened since I got off the bus from, from college sure. seven years ago. Um, so many beautiful experiences and makes you really value your relationships and makes me, um, I'm so grateful. I never imagined that I would be in one Broadway show, but now I've been in three. So that's the coolest thing in the world. 
Right. What are your dream roles? Do you have any big dream? Maybe mm. Heather Headley, maybe. I don't know. It's just an idea. You know, my dream role has always been um, Cole House in Ragtime. I want to do it really bad. And I, I, I did it once, actually, when I was you way too young. I was like 20 years old. You're a little boy Cole House? I was baby Cole House. Baby Cole House. <laughs> and I fell in love with the show. And I always said, I can't wait to do it when I'm, you know, the appropriate age and live some more. Oh, you have time. You still have time. I'm, I'm, yeah, right? Like, we got a little time left. So I can't wait to age into that and play that role. And I, that's a dream role of mine. And also something new and fresh and cool and show off different parts of my voice. And I think every show I've done has been a challenge because it's asked something different of me, something new of me, something that's been scary. Um, so I wanna keep doing that, but also I wanna be able to just do new work. Mm -hmm. What was scary about The Lion King? I'm playing oh, some. <laughs> There's so many things. All the dancing, like I, people are dancing in The Lion King. It's not your normal Broadway choreography, right? It's not, you know, tapping and jazz it's very right. intricate and, and modern and it's yeah. not what i do and these dancers who are in the show are these trained beautiful alvin ailey like epic dancers and i'm a mover <laughs> so learning how to do that movement and um make people believe that i am simba and a lion that was so hard also i have to fly in the show people don't realize that that scar and simba fly up to do That's the right. fight and i'm terrified of heights and I have no idea. Okay, so talk to me. How did they get you okay with it? I mean, you got to rehearse up there, right? A little bit. But you know what? They kind of tricked me. <laughs> the whole rehearsal process, they talked about, you know, the fight and learning the, the, the fight like a puzzle and everything. And they would just say in the rehearsal room, like, then they'll put on the harness and you're like, yo, go up and it's fine. They go really fast. On the stage, the first day, they flew me up in the air. All of a sudden, I was strapped into a harness and I was in the air in the wing and I was, you know, terrified and screaming and it took so long for me to get comfortable. Even now, I'm sure when I go back, I'll be getting yeah. my chakras together. <laughs> I was gonna say like, do you still, I wonder, does that fear ever come back certain nights? Like certain nights that you're just like, wait, I'm flying up in the air. Like, or you I always have to make sure I breathe to make sure that it doesn't um get too much for me, right? And I want to. I know how to do it exactly, like what steps to take, and I'm comfortable with Stephen who plays Scar. And it's. But there are some days where I'm like, get over yourself, Bradley. It's you say like four lines up here, then you go away. But it's scary, right? It's scary. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'd be terrified. I, that's not like. Uh, but it just seems like when you go into a long running show like that, they're not. They don't let you like have like. You can't be like. Hey, can I just go up there one more time? And can I go up there a few more times before we start? They got it's like you do it once and then you gotta do it. You no, know, yeah, the Lion King is a moving train that yeah. is stopping for no one. You gotta jump on and find your ground. So yeah, yeah, it's scary sometimes, but I love it. Which um, you know, there have been so many of these uh cast reunions happening right now, either on uh you know, stars in the house, Dr. Desky and James Wesley show, or in these Zoom videos or these you know, all these music videos, which which Broadway cast would you really love to see reunite? What would actually, like, what would get you really excited? Mm, well, didn't um, the, the Legally Blonde cast reunite it last night, right? Yeah, they just did it yesterday. And that was one of my, uh, that would be mine, but it happened last night because I saw that show, and it's funny, uh, with a school, on a school trip, and Richard Blake gave Richard, us a Richard, tour. Richard H. Blake, thank you. Richard H. Blake, sorry, so sorry. He gave us a tour, and we did Bronx still together for almost two years after that. And I love Richard. So I always tell Richard how um, I met him when I was just a wee little baby and he wasn't a wee little baby. <laughs> you, how did you get, how did you guys hook up the tour? I don't understand how's that work. I don't even know. I really don't know the powers that be, uh, my magical choir director, school teachers making that happen. We saw Legally Blonde, we saw Lion King. Yeah, crazy. So the Legally Blonde reunion was a big moment. That, 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 big that, moment. That cast, I love that cast album. Oh, it's one of the best. It's definitely a feel good, right? You can play it and, um, and get your life from start to finish. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's pop back in, Caitlin. How you doing, Caitlin? I love this. This is great, all the knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's see what the fans are asking. Yeah, sure. So Nadia on YouTube wants to know, Brad, when did you start loving Broadway in the first place? 
I started loving Broadway when I was a little kid. I started performing when I was about six years old. And um, yeah, I, I, I started loving Broadway when I was a little kid. I started performing when I was about six years old. And um, yeah, I, I started dancing and singing first. And then I realized by middle school and high school that musical theater was a thing. I started doing summer stock when I was about 15, 16 years old with adults. Hey, pause, pause. What roles did you play in summer stock when you were 15? Oh, I had a pretty epic turn as Richie in a chorus line. Oh, <laughs> give me the ball, give me the ball, give me the ball. Yeah. I was 16 and everyone else was adults. They're working actors from New York City who were in North Carolina doing a summer gig. That's yeah. That was a really cool summer. I learned about what Broadway really was and what it was like to be a working actor in New York City. It was, that was one of the best summers of my life. Wow, I love it, Richie. What theater was that at? That was at, uh, it was called Lee's McRae Summer Theater. It's in Boone, North Carolina. Cool. What was the housing like? <laughs> it was the college dorms. <laughs> okay. And I'd never been away from home at that point. And oh, wow. It was crazy. Yeah. Shit, Richie. <laughs> uh, well, uh, yeah, so Macy Griffiths on Facebook wants to know, out of the past two years, do you have a favorite memory of playing Simba? That was a really special moment. Anytime I get to uh, perform for my family, it's always um, overwhelming. I have to hold back the tears the entire show just because my family has done so much for me to get me here. You know, part of my success is their success. So that's always a beautiful moment and great memories. Mm, I love that. Love it. So um, I love. This is a classic question, but Elise on Facebook wants to know: Besides the Lion King, which Disney song is your favorite? Oh, go the, Lion King not, the Lion King is not a Disney song, by the way. There's no <laughs> song. How would that go? I mean, there could be. I am the Lion King. I mean, you hey, could. Give it to Tim Rice and Elton John. They'll probably come up with. They added a new song to Frozen. Why can't they throw in a new song for you when you go back? I am the Lion King. That's what we're going to, re let's request that, Paul. <laughs> All right. Let's go back to the real question. What's your favorite to Disney song? Um, go the Distance from Hercules. And I got to sing it uh, with Jelani and Alton at that big, epic uh, Disney concert back in the fall. So that was cool. That's, that's definitely a good one. I love that. Ooh, Adina on YouTube says, Brad, you did a show at the Delacourt once. What was it like doing an out show, outdoor show like that? Ooh, that was so fun and it was so hot. That was the summer of uh, a big heat wave. That was my first job in New York City, actually. Um, it was a dream come true. That was when I, that's when I met Alex Timbers and I worked with Patty Mernon Mer Mer and, and Daniel Breaker and uh, Rebecca Naomi Jones. That was a cool, cool summer. It was very, very hot though. We had nurses there on staff to help people had passed out or something. It was so hot. Now, you, your first show was Rocky, is that right? Or no, Bronx Tale. Rocky was my Broadway debut. Okay, Bro Rocky. Okay, so where were, now Rocky had that crazy big fight scene mm -hmm. at the end, peaking of Alex Timbers at the end. It was in the middle of the orchestra of the Winter Garden, right? What what were you doing during that scene? Where, where, what were you? Um, I was a swing in the show, so I covered all the guys in the ensemble. So those guys did the makeup in the in the ring with Andy and Terrence. So they would add the blood and the scars and whatnot. Also, the ensemble did um, they played security guards to help the ushers get people on stage. Like, right. It was a big moving machine to make that happen. Crazy. It took a week to tech just that twenty minutes. Yeah. That whole thing was crazy. That was nuts. Insane. Yeah, and then sometimes Andy was really getting punched, so that was a whole other thing. Oh my gosh. You were like really fighting. Yeah. <laughs> so stressful. Um, okay. Ooh, Caitlin on Facebook, not me, asks, what is your favorite part of being part of the Disney Broadway magic? I think just being part of it. There's not, I don't know if there's anyone my age or younger or older that has not been affected by Disney. My introduction to Broadway was pretty much Disney. Yeah. So I'm um, getting to be a part of that is mind blowing to me. Getting to, to see how many people from all over the world come to our show. It's not just New Yorkers. It's not just Americans. We're getting everyone there and everyone understands the stories and they feel like they're a part of them. Um, so that's the best part about Disney magic to me. It's universal. Totally. 
Oh, I love that. All right, I think we can end on this question. This is a big one, okay? Okay. Samantha on YouTube wants to know, who is your all-time favorite Disney character? Mm. Ooh. Um, all-time favorite Disney character? I might have to say Aladdin. Mm. He was pretty cool as a kid, right? He's jumping off buildings and stuff. He was epic. You said uh, you were thinking Aladdin. I was thinking Abu. So we're on the same. We're right here. I'll be your Abu. <laughs> I miss Abu, and uh, you know, I like that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, the stage one, they couldn't. I guess they didn't want to have like a child dressed up in a monkey costume or, or a real little monkey. That's kind of dangerous, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's good. I like, I'm into that. I like the live action Aladdin, it's interesting. I haven't watched it yet, I need to see it. Yeah, you, well you got time. Got all the time in the world. <laughs> you, got, <laughs> you got snacks. <laughs> all right, let's bring back Caitlin and Beth. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you uh, keep doing well. Are you planning your wedding yet? We are, and um, luckily a lot of our friends have had to cancel their weddings or change the date due to the oh. current state, but ours is, um. Good, until unless we're here a couple of months from now. Okay. <laughs> so who knows? But right now we're good. Yeah. Awesome. Happy to hear it. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks thank for joining you. us. Hey, Caitlin, why don't you tell us about tomorrow's guest? Yes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today for another episode of Live at Five Home Edition, live on both Facebook and YouTube. You can follow us wherever you get your podcast by searching for hashtag Live at Five and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in next time we talk to companies Bobby Conte Thornton and exclusively show you guys what he's been up to.